All right, Cram83, at least you finally give me something to debate on. You know, all the posts about ranting about how I'm weak-minded and delusional and just this poor, helpless sheep that just tells what it's told. And All right, so let's get to this. Evolution. So you think I am, and I quote, weak-willed, insecure, indoctrinated, and stubborn to refuse to accept evolution. All right, well, I'm going to refute and give my little speech on why I don't believe in evolution using science. Yes, there's plenty of science ev or evidence against evolution. I'm going to explain it to you. So, hope you can keep up with this. I'm going to post some links as well so you can follow and do some research too. The main evidence I find against evolution is ploidy, your gene numbers, okay, number of chromosomes. Now, as you know, humans have so many chromosomes, and they're paired, okay, and when the cell splits, they split apart, and your sperm cell has half, and the female egg has half, and they join together to make a whole. Hmm? Very nice and easy. Now, what happens if you try to cross two species that have a different number of chromosomes? Okay. So the reason why I bring up this point is because evolution, you know, says that we all start from here, you know, saying maybe a single chromosome, or maybe a couple chromosomes, or something like that, and eventually we evolved into everything that we have on Earth. But the chromosome numbers range greatly. I mean, from anything from one chromosome, which is the, like, bulldog ant or something like that, to I think there's some crabs that have, like, hundreds of chromosomes, okay? So that variety there. But you see, you know, sometimes you do get a genetic mutation where you add on a chromosome or two chromosomes. Say uh, when the egg splits, it didn't split apart from one of them, and it got pulled to one side, and there you go. You have a different number. We see this in some cases, things like zebras and donkeys. It's called zonctas. And uh, horses and donkeys. It does occur in nature. However, usually it results in sterility because if you have... You know, two even numbers, so you have, say, you know, 10 and 12, they make an 11 when they come together. And you can't split 11 evenly, you know, when it tries to make a sperm cell. So it usually results in infertility or other things. In fact, there's a rule about this. It's still a theory, um, but they haven't been really able to refute it totally. There are some occasional cases where it does, you know, go against this rule. It's called the Haldane's Rule, and it states... When the offspring of two different animal races, one sex is usually absent, rare, or sterile. That sex is the heterozygous. Okay? So what that usually means is that, yeah, usually you either get only males or only females, or they're rare to get like a male, and they're almost all females, or they're sterile. They can't reproduce. In fact, there's only such a few exceptions to this rule, for instance, like fruit flies, that bypass it, that to me, it doesn't seem very likely that through the, you know, course of time that you'd get a mutation and that they all would just end up, you know, being able to mate. Because, you know, if it's such a rare chance that a gene actually mutates to begin with, and I'm talking chromosome numbers here, we're not even talking about, you know, like, slight mutations. Um, that just doesn't seem very mathematical possible to get such a gene variety when almost every single time that you get a different number of chromosomes, they can't mate because they're sterile! <sighs> Plus, even the beginning of evolution. So, <sighs> good old Darwin. He went to an island, and he saw that, oh look, that bird has a long beak, and that one has a short beak. Yeah, what he saw was, let me get it right, it's either micro or macro, one of the two. I don't have it up right now. There's micro and there's macro evolution. Microevolution is the change with genes inside the same chromosome number. So you get like a, you know, a schnauzer dog and a husky dog, okay? That's the small variation that, you know, we have the ability to, you know, change genes over time. You know, just different combinations as they mix through produce slightly different results, okay? That's what Darwin saw. He did not see a monkey turning into a human, that would be the other type of evolution. So, the like I said, the difference between going from one creature to a whole new creature with different, you know, chromosome numbers and everything, it just doesn't happen. Plus, even if you go back to the whole beginning of life and how it came from nothing, even using, you know, current studies or whatnot, I mean, they're able to, and I have a link, and I'll send it in the comments, where they're trying to refute the whole issue of um, 
that the probability of going from nothing to a cell is um, so improbable. You know, that's what most people believe. And I still kind of feel that it's still very improbable. Um, a massive amount of RNA, which is half of a DNA, um, and they're starting to get some combinations together that they push it together and catalysts and all this other stuff. And then from that, the theory is that, okay, if you had a cell that had a membrane that allowed organic stuff in, but not inorganic, and it continued to build on that, and eventually it got so big that and something shook it, it might split, and you'd have two different cells that had similar genetic DNA, and that evolution could come from that. But have you really taken a look at how advanced cells are, that there's a little bit more to life than just a replication of DNA? Even if we had just DNA standing there, you know, sitting there or whatnot, it takes a little bit more mechanism to really create life. Um, the, you know, it's one thing to have random code going in there. It's another thing entirely to have that code be able to depict, you know, what part of the body is going to be the head, you know, the proteins and the enzymes that need to go for this and that and all those other things. In fact, if you look at the human cell, if you ever watched a uh, Harvard video did this really nice 3D thing called Inside the Cell, um, you really see how complex it is in there. And to think that that evolved over time, and again, this is, you know, over, even if you use, you know, scientific estimations and whatnot, that it's six billion years old or whatnot, the universe, you know, the Earth was only around for, you know, some of that, maybe most of it. Um, even if you go by that, the probability that first you go from nothing to something, that the something would be able to grow into something living, and that the something living would start to actually, you know, get different haploid numbers and not be sterile as it joins together, and then you get different species, and then those species would get different haploid numbers and be able to crossbreed and everything like that. It's just mathematically very, very, very not possible. In fact, I would say that it would be an act of God if it actually happened like that, and that the probabilities all came together. Okay, this is why I have a problem with evolution. Not because, you know, the Bible says that uh, God created the world or whatnot. It's because it's just stupid. It's mathematically improbable. I'm a math major. Well, actually, sorry. I'm a computer science major. One class away from being a math major. But I've been through all my, you know, mathy classes and stuff like that. Very mathematical. I like stats. Like, you know, but it just doesn't happen. And then also the research of whether a planet can actually sustain life. Um, I did a whole research paper on that, a thesis on that, like a 12-pager, and listing all the different things and all the research from where they got those numbers, it's a very, very small probability that life would be able to be sustainable. So that's my refute or my thing on evolution. Now, in the end, none of us were back there by the, uh, back when any of this happened, okay? So I still find it kind of stupid to argue about stuff that really no one can totally prove. I mean, it's good to think about but to, to base it on things like, you know, that, you know, you don't believe in evolution because, of course, it's not a theory, it's a law. Oh, oh, wait, it, it is a theory. N never mind. Oh, sorry. It's stupid. Um, as for your other comments, you know, how you've always called me weak-willed, insecure, indoctrinated, all this other little fun stuff, I find it really, really a reflection of the person commenting how they like to insult and belittle someone and tell them that they're this or that without even really knowing the person. Because you really don't know me. Trust me. I mean, unless you're stalking me, which would be kind of weird. But, you know, I, I really, I find it that the people who usually blatantly call arguments or blatantly call out insults without defending or giving reason, like, I'm going to call you stupid because of your commenting. I have a reason for calling you stupid because you... Uh, attack and say all this stuff without any actual like you know, knowing the person you just call me weak-willed how would you know being that you know actually do research on this stuff and uh i don't just believe what i'm told in fact i like to research it because it reaffirms things if the bible is true then in the end it's going to show all true isn't it not see that's the philosophy i've always had but that's because i'm weak-minded <sighs> Anyways, well, I hope you liked my little rant. Um, if you'd like to, you know, debate on a topic or something, please do. But please refrain from saying that I'm right, you're wrong, and you're stupid and indoctrinated, and, uh, you know, because you don't believe what I believe. And the school says so, and the media says so, so obviously it must be right. I rest my case.